Yeah, so uh, when I paint things, and this piece that I have here is a, um, a wall tile that is part of a commission, started originally as a commission by some clients who wanted some large substantial clay paintings to go outside. And so these are made to fix onto the wall. And they're great vehicles for the paintings. They're lovely substantial items in themselves and great vehicles for the painting. My favorite tool is this one, which is a slip trailer, which I like because you have to be loose to do it. You can't stand there going, mm, you have to pull. And, and I have no plans. I don't know quite what I'm going to do. And so my preparation is to empty my mind and to not have any plans, forget everything I've ever done, and uh, see what happens. So that's what I'm going to do now. Switch my brain off. I want the actual substance of the pot and the form to uh, be congruent with the way that it's painting. I, I wouldn't want to make a, a sort of you know, delicate light insubstantial form uh, or a tight form with loose expressive painting. I want the, the decoration and the form to be of a similar quality and a similar aesthetic. My immersion in Japanese culture was, you know, lasted much longer than just the time I was there. And so, yes, I am a Japanese potter, I think it's true to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anybody in Japan making pots like I do. Well, I don't think, yeah, I know there isn't, but um, I am, yeah, I am a Japanese potter. I've got, yeah, I think that's fair to say. <laughs> this whole method of clay preparation is a Japanese method that I learned when I was there, which is a great way of preparing clay for using on the kick wheel, on the Japanese kick wheel. I'm very attracted to clay because of the sense of touch and I think there's something about the language of touch that allows us to express parts of ourselves that cannot be accessed in any other way. Sometimes when, you know, it might look like I'm using my arms, but really I'm working from my back and my feet. And the arms are basically a conduit for the energy. It shouldn't be straining. Which is the same principle as rowing, actually. So there are three parts to this, and the, the first part was preparing clay in a long sort of rhythmic 
folding method. And then we do the one that's called the bull's tongue. You can see the tongue coming out, sticks his tongue out. The last one is the chrysanthemum momotori in Japanese. And so there we have quite a lot of clay to do some throwing. It doesn't take very long and it's aesthetically pleasing. It's a, an aesthetically pleasing way of preparing clay. The nice thing about this wheel is that it's slow turning, it's very direct, I can, I can stop it and start it, it's very very sensitive and it allows for soft clay, so you work with very soft clay, which is why the clay preparation um, is a sort of delightful part of it. You work with soft clay, which is easy on the body, it's not such hard work, and you use thick slip, not water. And that allows the pots to have a freshness and a life in them that, um, you know, is part of the sort of creative part of throwing. develop the shape a bit further along the road, but I, I don't dislike it at all. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> Lifting the bowl off this way, allowing it to distort and warp is actually acceptable and I can see and appreciate much more clearly that this really shows the sensuality of the clay much more than if it were symmetrical uh, and even. Um, the softness of the clay and the and the um, the sort of the living quality of the clay is still there, and it will be there even after it's fired and it's hard. It will still look soft because I've allowed it to um, to warp to to um, develop. I won't say warp or distort because it hasn't. It's developed. It's actually grown in the process of moving it from the wheel to here. And it was an aesthetically pleasing way to do it as well. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pleased that I can allow it and let it be. Why not? Why can't it be a perfectly valid salad bowl? These are her fantastic tools label which I brought back from Japan, which all the potters have in Japan, and uh, restaurant chefs have them as well for soup. And I don't know what British potters do, I don't know how they manage without a tool like this. It's fabulous.
being in the Daisei Pottery was a, um, a fantastic place for me to have worked because I cannot imagine a better place in as much as they allowed me to learn by watching and absorbing. There's a word in Japanese which we don't have in English which is osuwaru which sort of means learning by absorption. It's an active word. It's not about teaching, it's not about being taught. I wasn't taught but I was able to learn and that's what osuwaru means. I was in an environment where I could learn and um, and, and they allowed me to go at my own pace, they allowed me to learn by watching, so I would sit by the potters and just watch them, and then I would go off and, ha and do it myself, and they would offer words of encouragement, but they never ever told me how to do it, which is absolutely brilliant, because I would have rebelled, I would have either rebelled or I would have conformed. They were very free in their own way, and the way they uh, applied glazes and uh, and used the traditional mashiko five or six glazes. They were very creative in the way they applied them one on top of the other. where Hamada himself had worked sort of 60 or 70 years earlier and um, they inspired him and he in turn inspired them and the whole sort of um, spiral of mashiko creativity growing out of a tradition is sort of developing in a really healthy way. I met Takashi Yasuda there and uh, so my immersion in Japanese culture was um, was total when I was there and it sort of remained for a long time after I came back to England because I came back with Takashi. We were together for 20 years and we were speaking entirely in Japanese. That's how we communicated with each other. I did have one exhibition in Japan. I went back in 1992 yeah. uh, and it was a lovely gallery, the Green Gallery in Tokyo. And uh, um, I got a really good response actually, a really good response and it was lovely to sort of take the work back to where it had started and um, you know my work looks very different in Japan as it, as it does here, you know it's sort of expressive, it's painterly, it's colourful and I didn't see anybody else doing any work like that in Japan when I was there um, then so my work does look very different and it, and it got a, a really good response so I was very pleased with that. All through the time that I was with Takashi, he was um, a massive supporter of my work and of my way of working. And so uh, he believed in me absolutely totally. And so that um, allowed me to believe in myself totally. And so, no, I wasn't nervous. I was quite excited. Sometimes I think I could have had a parallel life as a boogie jazz piano player. I mean, I would have been quite happy doing that, or I would have, I could have had a parallel life um, 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 making wacky clothes. You know, I mean, there's sort of probably several ways, but you know, this is in the most fantastic way to to live, and it does allow me to express um, myself in a way that I wouldn't be able to in any other way.